Sustainable development is the ability of us in this generation to meet our needs while protecting the needs of future generations. At Vermillion, we know we're in the midst of an energy transition. We support the transition, we're a part of that transition. But at the same time, we recognize that there, there are still going to be quite large quantities of oil and gas consumed during the transition. That means protecting our ability to operate in the long term while also managing the environmental, social and governance factors that are important to the company, also to our external stakeholders. We are a Calgary-based energy producer. We produce about 100,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. Half of that is gas, half of that is oil. Uh, you know, we operate in areas that have quite strong environmental standards. We have made environmental sustainability a core part of our strategy, and we are using our strategic energy infrastructure to try to advance the energy transition. Our communities comprise a wide diversity of locations and people but they have one thing very much in common, and that's that the people in our communities care very deeply about the safety, environmental stewardship, and corporate citizenship that we bring to our operations. As a result, we take a shared value approach to investing in our communities. We want to make sure that our operations are good for our communities, so we look for unmet needs. We engage with the communities to find out what they need from us, what we can provide, and then we invest not only financially, but also from an employee perspective. So it, it all started uh, a little bit longer than 10 years ago when uh, we started uh, talking to the mayor of the cities we operate, our neighbors, uh, either industrial, agricultural or even citizens, uh, of the fact that uh, we had resources that could be useful for them and that uh, we could provide them with uh, these resources like hot water from our wells. In 2008, Vermillion approached our growers group wondering if we would be interested in utilizing their geothermal heat, which was coming from their oil wells. This to us was a logical solution and in finding a sustainable solution to producing tomatoes long into the future. Tom Dackey currently cultivates 25 hectares of uh, speciality tomatoes under glass, uh, employing 350 people, producing nine months a year. We have roughly a million plants, uh, producing 18,000 tonnes of tomatoes per year. When we produce oil at Parentis, it actually comes out of the ground as a mixture of oil and water. We separate out the oil from the water and we put the water back into the field in order to maintain the operating pressures. In this particular case, what we're doing is we're adding an extra step to that journey, the heat exchanger. In order to recover the geothermal waste heat from the Vermilion oil wells, we've installed three heat exchangers, which remove the equivalent of eight megawatts of heat. This is distributed in the greenhouse via the grow pipe and the pipe rail, which is on the floor. It is necessary to heat our greenhouses in order to not only uh, extend our growing season and have the suitable temperature required by our plants, but it is also necessary to have this heat to dehumidify our greenhouses, which should allow uh, for lower disease pressure and subsequently allow us to uh, produce uh, pesticide-free tomatoes. So that's you know the agricultural model in the last few in the last years have changed. That kind of it's really my father's generation was pesticide, 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 and it's not at all necessary. By using geothermal waste heat to heat our greenhouses, it has allowed us to put in a, a logic to the way we farm, to have a more sustainable, environmentally friendly outlook to our way of farming. And this has actually allowed us to produce uh, 25 hectares of tomatoes on the glass, which are both pesticide free and environmentally um, sensitive. I think before we actually developed uh, using low water temperature to heat our greenhouses from a different industry, it was relatively unknown in this country. We could say that we were the pioneers of uh, the synergy between an industrial and a, and a farming group and subsequently we set up a, an economic model for others to follow. The partnership with uh, agriculture is not the only one we have in France. We also have the heating of uh, eco neighborhood. The mayor came to us and said I want to build an eco neighborhood 
uh, area, but I would like to benefit from your heat. So we again made a design that allow 450 houses to benefit from the heat of this well, and they are heated for free. Uh, and among these 450 houses, we have 30% of them which are social housing, so we are also very pleased to uh, contribute to their good living. The sustainable development goals are really important because it's essentially the world saying this is what we want the future to look like, this is what we want for ourselves and the planet in 2030. Several years ago we analyzed our operations to assess where our contributions to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals could be the strongest. This resulted in us realizing that we actually contribute to every single one of the 17 goals. But obviously, geothermal projects like the one at Parentis have a much stronger impact on two of the goals. Number seven, which is focused on making clean energy affordable and accessible for everybody. And number 17, which is focused on partnerships. What we've realized though is that the goals are very much interconnected and so when you have a positive contribution to make in one area, you make it in other areas. In this case, industrial innovation and local employment as well. When we're working with governments, other companies, the civil sector, it's really helpful for us to have the goals as a common vision, a common focus and a common language to help make those pet partnerships better. There are some important tangible results from this partnership. 10,000 tons of CO2 that's avoided and a local industry that we've jump-started that probably will ultimately employ 500 people. In the future, we hope that other energy companies will work with communities and governments to deploy critical energy infrastructure, already installed oil and gas infrastructure in ways that can reduce carbon intensity and advance the economic sustainability of communities. None of us can do this alone. Working together is going to allow us to advance farther and faster through the energy transition.